All right, here we are working on this Craftsman T2300. I did a video on rebuilding the deck already. This section here, we're going to be looking at the steering. This is one of Craftsman's tractors that has the tight turning radius steering. So you end up with this extra piece in here. Let's the wheel turn very sharp. So I remember seeing commercials for these when they were new years ago. This is a 2017 model. And they showed that, you know, you have a really tight turning radius. Well, that's a nice feature. But there's two sides to every coin. The other side of that coin is you have more parts to wear out. So when you're driving this forward, when this starts to wear, Instead of your wheel being straight, you know, both your front tires being straight, they start to go like this. They start to turn out a little bit. So you, you end up wearing more here on the tire than on the outside. And, uh, you know, you lose some of your steering. It's not tracking right. So what happens here is when you turn this wheel, you know, all I'm doing is turning it like this. And maybe you can't see the other wheel, but the other wheel's not moving. You have all this play. Now, when you're going forward, this axle gets pushed back. So you can kind of see when that axle goes back, it's actually, the axle is actually tilting back because it's on a pivot. So there's a little bit of play like this. It actually, you know, tilts back and the wheel turns a little bit. Both wheels actually turn out a little bit. And there's also play in these joints right here. You know, th this here is turning, which is allowing this to turn. This arm back here going to the steering wheel, that's not moving. You have a little bit of play in that joint, a little play in this joint, a little play in this joint here. And it all adds up to your wheels being towed out. Over time, you know, these get hard to steer. And something that, you know, people don't really think about is greasing the front end you know you have a grease fitting here that's common all, all riding mowers have that grease fitting there but this joint here that turns there's also a grease fitting under there that you have to use you have to put some grease in that because anytime that this starts to steer hard when you start getting resistance in there you're going to cause more wear on your joints and your steering is going to get worse and worse Sometimes when I get these tractors, you can't hardly steer them. You can't make a turn with them because the steering is so far, it's so worn that it just doesn't go straight. So we're going to make a little bit of a improvement here. <clears throat> the ideal thing to do would be if one of the, if something, one of these rods was, had some adjustment, you could at least straighten the wheels back out. Now, sure, you could replace all these parts. You'd have to replace that, that rod and this rod because none of these joints can be tightened up. They all have to be replaced. And as a homeowner, maybe, you know, if this has been a really good tractor for you and you have the ability to, and the tools to do that, you know, it's something that you should look into. I didn't price these. I don't know what they cost. But I'm going to make this plate, the hole, I'm going to make it adjustable so we can adjust the toe a little bit. Now, ideally, to do this, you would slot this hole so you can bring the wheel in a little bit. But that's not going to be that easy for me to do. So I'm going to make the hole. A little bit bigger. Now I'm going to have to use the half inch drill bit to do that. Hopefully there's enough battery left in this drill.
Now, of course, your local mower shop is not going to do this. It's not really the correct thing to do, but it's going to help. Yes, you could do the other side. You could do that side also, but it doesn't need a whole lot of change right now. But over time, you, you may want to end up doing the rest of them as things wear. Or once it gets to the point that it's time to really change one of the joints, then you just get new ones. So now we're going to make sure that this is all the way over that way. And right now, this can slide back and forth. There we go. Now I just have to hold that over while I tighten it. There we go. Now we'll grease both of those. When I grease the, the steering on tractors like this, I like to jack it up. That way, you can, the grease can go to the bottom. It can go all around the shaft on the sides, but it can also come out the bottom because that's where you really need it. That's where the weight of the tractor is, normal operation. We'll grease that inside. So the next time you're servicing your Craftsman tractor, and you see that it has this plate here. Remember, there's a grease fitting down here underneath. And make sure that these are tight. Sometimes, you know, they can work their way loose, even though they're lock nuts. And, you know, if your steering, if your wheels are pointed out, you know, this is a, a, a repair that you can make that doesn't really cost you anything. It doesn't hurt anything. Now, if you adjust it in too much, you're going to lose your steering going backwards because then the wheels are going to be towed, towed out when you're backing up. So that's why I didn't do the other joints. I don't want to go too much on changing it. All right, now I want to do kind of a walk around with this tractor. Like I said, Craftsman T2300. This is actually a Craftsman model. It's not an MTD model. So this one's a 42-inch deck, which is typical. As far as operation, this handle here, you move that up to there, it engages the blade. I got to bend this handle down a little bit. It's too close. When it's disengaged, you hit your hands there. It's hard to steer. Now, this has a feature, like most, that you can back up with the blades on. You can go in reverse with the blades on. On this model, when, it, when the motor, when the tractor's running, the key's in that position. Now this here is supposed to be a tractor, and uh, there's an arrow there pointing backwards. So when you want to back up with the blades on, you can put the key back one notch, and now every time you move the pedal to shift in to go backwards, you can back up without turning the blades off. If you don't put the key there, if you leave the key here and you hit the pedal down here to go in reverse, it's going to shut the engine off. So that's that's the purpose of that. Now, when you use that, you have to make sure there's nobody around, no small kids or pets that you could back over. That's what that's there for. So like I said, pedal, this here is a, what you would consider a pedal drive automatic. So you push on the pedal on top to go forward. You push on the pedal a little bit, you go slow. You push on it farther, you go faster, just like a car. And then you push on the pedal down to go in reverse. Now, it's not going to go quite as fast in reverse because you just don't need to. But this is, this is automatic, and it's pedal drive. Now, you might think, oh, automatic, okay, it's hydrostatic. This is not hydrostatic. It does have a lever back here to pull out. So 
it really looks like it's a hydrostatic transmission, but it's really not. I have worked on a few of these already. I replaced a belt on one that I, on that tractor, the gas tank was in the back under the seat. I had to pull the transmission out to replace the belt. The belt and the way it works is kind of like a snowblower, uh, not a snowblower, a snowmobile, in that th there's two pulleys under on top of the transmission that change the speed. And here you can see, this is a plastic transmission. Now, don't let that scare you. These actually work pretty good. Although I did get one that the transmission was falling out, but I really think that someone that didn't really know what they were doing decided they were going to work on it and gave up with the transmission part way out. Now, I don't know in there. You really can't see, but there is a pulley in there with a belt. It's like a, an inch wide belt, roughly. Well, as you use it, that belt's going to wear down and get thinner, and you're going to lose your speed and your drive. It's going to feel like the hydrostatic transmission's going bad. But on this one, with this plastic transmission, check it out. It could just be the belt going bad, that it, the belt's wearing out. Now, on this one, you have the battery under the seat here. So there, I did see a video by someone else where you take that battery out, depress these here, this whole case will come out, and right there is your transmission, and it's not hard to change the belt if you have the battery in the back. The last one I did like this, the gas tank was there. I had to pull the, the transmission out. But overall, this machine's in really good condition. I'm getting it ready to go. And here's the engine, you know, platinum edition, which means extra air filter and you have an oil filter down there. And this one is a 2017 model by the date code there. I don't know if it's showing up, but the, the first two digits in the code here on the Briggs and Stratton, that's the year. So this is only a seven year old machine. And it is in very nice condition. And uh, pretty soon here, it's going to be ready to go. And it'll be cutting grass within another month. Now, this bracket here is for the bagger. I do have a bagger with this. It's your regular tube-in bagger. And with this kind of bracket, the bagger just slides right on there. This bracket is made to, to stay on the tractor, which is convenient. I do need to put the rubber handle on this. Somehow that became missing. But uh, yeah, that's a, a quick little walk around of a Craftsman T2300. They're not bad machines. They're typical Craftsman. If you maintain them, you'll be all right. Like I said, this is the one I did a video. It's on my channel. I did a video of replacing the spindles, the blades, and the, the pulleys on top. Otherwise, the deck was in really good condition. I am going to raise these, or I'm going to lower these gauge wheels. They have them in the top hole, so they're not really doing anything. I'm going to make, I'm going to lower them closer to the ground. That way, the deck doesn't ride on the ground and, and beat up the blades. One of the spindles on this deck was broken because, you know, there was something sticking up out of the ground, and the blade found it. Because these gauge wheels weren't doing anything and they must have had the blade down all the way. So, uh, yeah, this will be ready pretty soon. Hope you liked the video. Click the like button and subscribe. There will be more videos like this doing repairs and, you know, general uh, overall re review of the machines that I work on here. Thank you. Bye.